Evidently. But Alan, let me just yeah. jump in there. Only tonight, the Israeli ambassador to the UK made it abundantly clear two-state solution is gone. Israel... I'll, I'll play he's you the wrong. clip. I'll play you the clip. Here. Yeah, but he's wrong. Is he there did. still a chance for a two-state solution? I think it's about time for the world to realise the Oslo paradigm failed on the 7th but, of October and we need to build a new one. And in but, order to build but a but new one... does that new one include the Palestinians living in a state of their own? Does, think, is that what it includes? I think the biggest question is what type of Palestinians are on the other side? This is what Israel no, realised on the 7th of October. Though? The answer is absolutely no. You see, when you hear that, oh, this wrong. confirms... This but confirms. She's wrong. Yeah, but hang on, Alan. This confirms what many Palestinians yeah. have feared, that for 20 years or more, uh, the Israeli government, and Netanyahu in particular, have had absolutely zero interest in any two-state solution. And, and so if that's but not... But let's remember that... But let's remember that Israel offered a two-state solution in 1948, 1967, 1994, 2000, 2001. They came very close to 2001. 2005, 2007. The vast majority of Israeli people... Israel's a democracy, unlike Hamas. The Israeli people will vote for a two-state solution if the circumstances are right, if there is no Hamas, and if the Palestinian Authority will have elections, and if the people of... The West Bank and Gaza vote yeah, for but again, a peaceful again, Palestinian okay, I'm going to come, I'm going to come back There to will no, be a two-state solution. I'm going to come back to Professor Fingerson yeah. in one second. But, again, today, Netanyahu has said explicitly there can be no Hamas run or Fatah run Gaza after this. He said it today. Yeah, he's, but got he's, no not intention. Be in he's got no intention. He's after He's got no intention of either he's Hamas not... or Fatah running Gaza. So who is going to run it? He, I think he, think, be, he thinks he wants to. He... He's not going to be in power after this. After this, there will be a national security government, probably headed by people like Gantz, maybe a Bennett. Uh, the people of Israel are going to decide, and the people of Israel get to make that decision, and they're going to decide on a two-state solution. The one thing that's clear is with Gaza dominated by Hamas, there cannot be a two-state okay, solution. Let me go back to but Professor without Fingerson. Hamas, okay. anything's possible. OK, I agree with that. I don't think Hamas can possibly be left in control. I just don't think that this mission is going to eradicate Hamas in the timescale which America is right. now clearly laying down for their support. Professor Finkelstein... You may be right. How do you see this playing out from here? OK, I would like to say a couple of things, if you don't mind, if it's OK. Yeah. Number one... Uh, Professor Dershowitz attaches a lot of uh, importance to the, what the people of Israel want. And so let's look at what the people of Israel want. According to the most recent polls, 60% of Israelis believe, Jewish Israelis, 60% of Jewish Israelis believe that Israel is not using sufficient force in Gaza. 60% believe that Israel should, or the government, should escalate the amount of force it should use in Gaza. Number two, it's the Israeli government, excuse me, it's the Israeli people who democratically elected this ultra-right-wing government. It's not as if the claims are made that Hamas has been imposed on the people of Gaza. But there is no imposition in Israel. I quite agree with Professor Dershowitz, at least for Jewish Israelis, for Jewish Israelis, it's a democratic country. And they democratically elected the ultra-right-wing government. So I think those are two very good indications. I can't say they're very auspicious indications, but they are very good indications of what the Israeli people want. Number three, I'm not now going to go into a long disquisition on the history of the so-called peace process, but I would ask your listeners, if they have the time, patience, and interest, to just Google what's called the peaceful settlement of the question of Palestine. And that's a General Assembly resolution that comes up every single year for decades. And it calls for that two-state settlement on the June 1967 border, and it calls for a peaceful settlement on the basis of international law. Now, if you look at the voting record every single year, 
It's the whole world, including the state of Palestine, on one side, supporting a two-state settlement on the basis of international law, and on the other side, opposing it's the United States, Israel, and usually some South Pacific atolls like Tuvalu, Nauru, and Micronesia, and the Marshall Islands. That record is written in stone. It can't be changed. And it makes very clear what is the obstacle to a settlement. The obstacle is Israel, backed by the United States, opposes a two-state settlement on the basis of international law, the law that has been defined by the International Court of Justice, the legal arm of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. Now, wrong. I'm going to make one remark now, which you will find perhaps controversial or unacceptable, Pierce. However, I hope you'll allow me to say it, and then you can engage it, as you said, in a civil fashion. You say that the actions of Hamas have disqualified it from any participation in a peaceful settlement. Now, I am not going to make any brief for Hamas. It's for the people of Palestine to decide who should be their leaders, who should represent them. But I do have to ask you, Piers, and I respect you, so I'm asking you this as a matter of not rhetoric, but one intelligent person to another, I'm asking a simple question. If it's the case that the actions of Hamas on October 7th disqualify it from being party to a peaceful settlement, Roughly 1,200 people were killed, about 30 of them being children. Why is it not then also the case that the actions of the state of Israel since October 7th, the deliberate, the deliberate war of genocide against the people of Gaza, which has left about 15,000 people dead, not 1,200, 15,000, and has left dead not 30 children, but has left dead about 7,000 children. And as we speak now, a 7,000 more children are threatened with death because of starvation. I ask you, as a logical proposition, why isn't the state of Israel disqualified from any final settlement of the question. And one last thing, because you ask, what do I believe? I will tell you what I believe. I believe, number one, immediately after the war comes to an end and the blockade of Gaza, that cruel, inhuman blockade of Gaza, that war crime in Gaza, that crime against humanity, the blockade of Gaza, it has to be lifted. But once there's a ceasefire, and once that inhuman blockade of Gaza is lifted, once the walls of that concentration camp come tumbling down, then I see two steps. Step number one, there have to be war crimes prosecutions. I have no problem in saying on both sides, but there must be accountability. You cannot get away with executing a war of genocide in broad okay. daylight and then continue. And number two, there has to be a settlement on the basis of international law. That is the only okay. consensus basis for ending the conflict once and for all. OK. I want to just... A very quick reply, please, Professor Dershowitz. I was going to end it there, but I want to give you a right of reply on that one point. You're a lawyer. Uh, this point about international law, when President Biden 
the head of, of uh, America, the biggest, strongest ally for Israel, comes out and says that the bombing has been indiscriminate. He is accusing Israel directly of committing war crimes. That is a war crime, if it has indeed been indiscriminate. Is this war now at a stage where America may pull its support because they believe that Israel is breaching international law? 